on the screen, all I have to do is just move this. You're gonna, and it'll come back. You're gonna come back to this browser right here. Uh, so if something comes up on the screen, I just bring this up here. I can either touch that and I'll be back home, right? Yes. And then I'll look down here. And hit go live again. Go live again. But you're Thank still you. on our Instagram. So I'm still on Instagram. I understand, but I want the 1.2 million plus the 90,000 <laughs> on Instagram. Can you feel it, brother? Up in here, up in here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. All right. As soon as y'all get in the car, something's going to happen. I know it. I know it. Tell her when, when she comes in, close the door when she comes in, okay? okay? All right, very good. Now I want to ask you a question. And, and I, first of all, I want you to like this page and share it. Like this page and share it because I've got a message for you. I, I decided every day that God gives me breath that I'm... I'm going to live out the mission on my life. It's been said, and I'll say it again and again and again. The most important day in your life, come on in, come on in. Yeah, the most important day in your life is the day that you're born and the day that you realize why you were born. And to me, when you realize why you are here and, and someone saw it for me, I, I didn't see it myself, that my... My mission in life is to change people's lives, to give people a larger vision of themselves and, and teach them how to manifest their greatness and live their dreams. That's, that's why I'm here. Why are you here? Have you ever asked yourself, what, what, what's the purpose of my life? Especially when you're going through some drama, you want to know, uh, what's it all about, Alfie? <laughs> you know what? I just, I wanted to know the meaning and purpose of my life. And a friend, Mike Williams, he said to me, Brownie, you, you love people. That's who you are. You, you, you always make us feel good. I was at the radio station in WVKO in Columbus, Ohio. He was my news director. I encourage you to, to get his book. It's called The Road to Your Best Stuff by Mike Williams. I want you to write this down. You can get it on Amazon. I encourage you to get the audio. There's some heavy stuff in there. There have been many motivational books written, thousands. But let me share something with you. Mike Williams is different. He has some concrete things that you can use right now that will make the rest of your life the best of your life. So I want you to go to Amazon. I'm going to start doing a series on his book, and I'm going to, with the help of my technologist, Going to do a split screen so you can see this person that I've been talking about for many, many years, who's been my mentor for over 48 years. So here's what I want to talk to you about now. Number one, make every day count. It doesn't matter that I'm, I'm not going out to be engaged or employed by someone to speak. I have a platform, I have a, an ability to touch somebody's life. Somebody listening right now, and I want you to like this page and share it. Somebody listening right now needs to hear my voice, needs to hear my laughter, needs to hear the, the content that I have in my mind and the ideas that I would like to share and, and the experiences that I've gone through. And it might be of some support to them. And if just one person at the end of this broadcast on, on Instagram and, and Facebook has had a shift in their thinking, then it's worth it to me. That's, that's my payoff. When I can change lives, I'll never forget when I first started out in motivational speaking in 1980, and there was an infomercial sponsored by Gunther Rinker promoting Tony Robbins as a motivational speaker. He had a program called Personal Power. I know Tony, and Tony is, is a wonderful guy. And so I sent them one of my videos and said, hey, I'd like to partner with you, and I'd like to have an infomercial. Can we partner together on that? And they were very honest. They sent me back a letter. This is 1980. Uh, you are black, and we don't believe a black person would have appealed to the general American public. I, I 
sent them back a letter, said, thank you for reminding me that I'm black. I, I never would have known that had you not told me. <laughs> <laughs> so it became clear that all the things I read in, in Think and Grow Rich, it became clear that all the things I learned from Napoleon Hill and, and Zig Ziglar, see you at the top, it became clear. All the things that I read in Dr. Norman Vincent Peale's book, The Power of Positive Thinking, that didn't apply to me. Those principles, that to a large degree, but it was clear that Tony had the complexion of connection, and I have the connection, the, the, the complexion of rejection. And so there's a different standard, there's a different method, there's a different path that I have to take in order to overcome all the things in a system and in a culture that's stacked against me. And so I remember I said, Mike, this is not fair. He said, Brownie, life is not fair. It's not fair, get over it. Birds eat worms. <laughs> it's not right, but they do. <laughs> But well, here's what he told me, and for those of you that, that have an interest in being a life coach or being a speaker or being a trainer, here's something he told me. I want you to, to write this down. Impact drives income and requests. Impact drives income and requests. I train speakers, and, 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 and the method that I use to train speakers is the method that I learned from Mike Williams. He said, Brownie. He said, no, you don't have millions of dollars invested in you like Tony, but here's what you do have. You got a story. You learn how to tell that story to change lives. You learn how to tell that story so that when, when people are listening to you, you are able to transform their lives individually and collectively. He said, you will not only become nationally known, you will become globally known. You know what? He was right. And so I, I want you to think about what is it you have? What you have? I had a story, but I felt that I, I needed a college degree. I, I felt that I needed a PhD. I felt like I needed an MBA. I felt like I needed some letters behind my name, a guy named Robert Roots. He used to date my daughter, and he said, it's not what you don't have, it's what you think you need that keeps you from becoming successful. Wow, think about that. As you think about your goals and dreams, that what you have is enough. Now, if you're going in a specialized area to become an attorney or become a doctor or becoming a pharmacist or an engineer, that, that requires a level of certification. But if you're not going in those areas, this is the age of the entrepreneur. Over 20,000 people are losing their jobs every day. And don't despair even if that has happened to you because there are tools available. If you've got a story, I can show you how you can earn more money in an hour than you earn working for two to three years. In fact, I had one contract in a month. The average person earns in the United States over $240,000 a year US. I had one contract where I spoke Monday through Thursday for 45 minutes, Monday through Thursday for 45 minutes for one month. And I earned more during that time than I would have earned in two lifetimes. The, the average person would have to work 80 years to earn what I earned in that one month. And this, this could be documented. So when I talk to you tonight, my goal is to talk to you about the pathway to your greatness and to your dreams. I talked to a friend of mine this evening, Claudia, who has an incredible story. And, and, and they said that in life when things happen to you, they can make you bitter or they can make you better. That she has every justification based upon her experience, every justification based upon what she went through mentally and emotionally and physically, the abuse that she went through to become bitter. Another, another friend of mine, Elisa, and these two individuals made a conscious, deliberate, determined effort 
that I'm going to use my experience to empower other women. I'm, I'm going to use the things, the insight, the methods, the breakthrough that I had, that moment of awakening that I had to help other women not go down the path where I went. See, at the end of the day, if we knew better, we would do better. And so all of us have a story that can inspire, that can motivate, that can encourage people. All of us can do that. And I, I believe, and I believe my, my Angelo is right, that there's nothing as painful as an untold story buried in your soul. What is it? What, what experiences have you had that can help people out, that can make a difference in someone's life, that can shift their thinking? What is that? And I believe that we all, especially now, my goal is to train, at first I've said, I want to train 10,000 voices of hope. And then I thought about it. Most people are not serious. No. No. I want to train 77. You know, you, you, you can walk out tomorrow morning and, and you can see some pigeons. But if you're looking for eagles, for 77 eagles, it's going to take you a minute. Why? Because most people are not serious about making a difference with their lives. We live in an entertainment-driven culture. Most people will spend more time, more energy, and more money on entertainment, stress-relieving things, than on educating themselves, on empowering themselves. And if you're listening to me now, understand and know you're different. Everything I'm saying, you already know it. You're different. And, 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 and be with that. You are uncommon. One great man wrote, I, I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull, or having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, and face the world boldly and say, this I have done. You are uncommon. The path that you've decided to take, the values that you represent, the way that you've decided to show up in life, you're not common. Most people spend their time and energy watching trash on television. My daughter, Ona Brown, she calls it television. <laughs> it programs you. And, and so you're different. And sometimes it can appear to be lonely. It's lonely at the top. I can tell you that it's lonely at the top. But you eat better. <laughs> Yes, Henry David Thoreau was right. Do not go where the path may lead. Go where there's no path and leave the trail. Or carve out another trail. But you're different. And understand, know that. You, whoever you communicate with, you, the values of, of the, the five closest people that's in your life, that's in your ear, you're a reflection of them. When I heard that, I started changing my relationships because I remembered something my mother said similar to that. And sometimes you have to hear it from another voice. She said, Leslie, if you hang around nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll become number 10. <laughs> I said, y'all got to go from here. Don't go away bad, but you got to go. You got to get up out of here. Why? Because people, they rub off on you. They rub I'm, I'm going to London. London, can you hear me? Les Brown is coming. Spread the word. In fact, notify people now. Les Brown is coming to London on January the 20th. And after I'm there for like two or three weeks, I develop a British accent. <laughs> I do it when I drink my tea. I hold my pinky up. <laughs> I got problems, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why do you laugh so much? Because I'm happy. 
I'm happy. <laughs> now, listen. So, London, I, I want you to tell your friends, family members, uh, people that you care about to go to lesbrowninlondon.com, lesbrowninlondon.com, and get your tickets now. It's going to sell out. The place sold, I think, around 2,000 people. And we've sold over 1,000 tickets so far. And it's going to be sold out. It's going to be sold out. And it's going to be up close and personal, even though that we have some other speakers on the platform, including my daughter, Ona Brown, including John Wimbrey, my spiritual son, who wrote the book, and I want you to get it called From the Hood to Doing Good. John is a bad boy. He's going to teach you how to develop your leadership potential, how to begin to increase your ability. If you have a multi-level marketing organization, how to, how to attract people, build your organization, how to retain them, how to keep them. And the other thing is, if you're a small business entrepreneur, or a large business entrepreneur, he'll teach you how to bring the best out of yourself and also the best out of the people that's on your team. Now, here's the other person that's going to be on there. And I love her. Wow. Marie Cosgrove. She's about five feet tall, maybe about 4'10". Powerhouse. She proves big things come in small packages. She's going to be in the lineup, too. Now, you really, really want to hear her story as well. She became the number one salesperson at the company where she was. First woman to be hired and became number one. So guess what? This single mother of five children, the CEO of the company said, look, you are making too much money. Now, first, let me pause there. Isn't that something? What nerve? It's not where they were giving her this. She earned this. She built the business. She took the time to educate herself, to learn how to overcome objections, how to begin to close the sale, how to build relationships with your clients. She had a relationship-driven strategy where they had a transition, a transaction-driven strategy. They were, they were treating their potential customers like a transaction. But she learned how to build relationships with people. It came number one. And so we, we want you to come on salary and, and then train the other salespeople. She said, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm a single mother, five children. I need every dime I'm earning. And they fired her. Yes, they did. Do you know what? Helen Keller said, when one door closes, another door opens. But most people spend so much time and so much energy looking at and talking about the closed door they missed the open door. She used that as an opportunity to, to, to start another business, her own business, and to build that business. And she did so well, the CEO called her from the other company who had fired her and said, uh, would you be interested in buying our company? She said, well, let me look at the numbers. Come to find out, when she looked at the numbers, she was generating over 80% of the income. So they shot themselves in the foot. You know, there's a song, if you dig a hole for me, you better dig two, because the one you dig for me might be for you. And she, after two years, Marie Cosgrove went back and bought the company that fired her. Help me out, somebody. Hold it, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. Did you hear me up in here? You want to see her. Get your ticket down. Go to Les Brown in London now. Les Brown in London, January 20th. Get your ticket down and, and come see Marie, and she can light a stage up. She's, she's bad. And Johnny Wimbrey and my daughter, Ona. And I can tell you, I, I can't wait to be there. I will be eat, eating hot pepper on a fork. I, I can't wait to get there. Trust me on that. If you're anywhere near London, come. You, you, in fact, you will know when I land, the vibration will change. <laughs> I will take no prisoners and eat the wounded. <laughs> so January the 20th is going to be an experience. Not some hype party. No, 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 no. This will transform your life. And I have selected places where I'm going to go. And I love London. Yes, I do. I'm also going to Turkey. Going to Turkey, been invited to speak in Turkey and Dubai. I love Dubai. Never been to Turkey before, 
I've been to Dubai. I love Dubai. Did I tell you I love Dubai? It's one of the most beautiful and and culturally spiritual places I've ever been. The energy is very calming. It's it's a whole different experience. There's nothing like traveling. Do you like to travel? I love going to different countries. And I was in Hong Kong. You know, you can be in a a mall with 4,000 people and hear yourself think. I'm telling you, hear yourself think. The peace, the culture, it's different. You know, sometimes in America, we think we got everything. Trust me, you, you haven't been everywhere. There are so many people that so ahead of us and look at us like we're wild animals. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a different kind of place. So I encourage you to travel. I've been in 51 different countries and had no idea when Mike Williams said, Brownie, you, you can do more than be a disc jockey. I was on WBKO, Les Brown, the man about town. And, and this man, he became my mentor. I hired him as my, my strategist and my coach. And he brought out this Les Brown that you now see. I had no idea that he existed. I don't know you, but here's what I know about you based upon my own experience. You have something special. You've got greatness in you. Yes, you do. And But when you live in a world where we are told more about your limitations rather than your potential, many times you don't have a clue. When I, I speak to audiences, I, I ask the question, how many of you know if you had your life to live over again, you could have done more than what you've done thus far? And most people, when they're honest, they reflect and they think about it, and they raise their hands and say yes. And, and, and the reason why most people don't live up to their true potential, why most people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65, is because we've been told no so much, we've been judged, we've been labeled, and we bought into it. I'm here to say to you, whether you believe it or not, you have greatness in you. And if you stick around, if you listen to me often enough, I will break through those layers of disbelief that's in you. I'll break through. I suffered from possibility blindness. I couldn't see myself living another life. I couldn't see it. I didn't think it was available to me because I have the complexion of rejection because I don't have a college education, because if both my parents came in this room right now, I would not know either one. I'm adopted. But you know something? This just came to me. This came to me. And I guess there's some things you bury. My godmother, my, my brother, I have a twin brother. He always felt like our godmother was our birth mother because she and Mamie Brown had nothing in common. My, my godmother, she, she, she looked white. And so she was not allowed in Overtown in, in Miami when we were coming up. I remember going downtown with her and, and white people asking, what are you doing with that little nigger boy? And she said, because I'm one too. And Wesley has always felt that she was our mother. Always felt that. She since passed. But I, I, I found out something recently. You might have been right. You might have been right. Isn't life interesting? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Whenever I speak or see my son speak, I always wonder, what was my father like? What, what kind of guy was he? What did he do? I believe that we pick up certain things. And I see Ona speak, or my daughter Serena, or Samaya, or John Wesley, or Patrick. I see things that they do that I didn't teach them. Things that I used to do. There's some things you pick up genetically. Isn't that interesting? Yes, you do. So that's some time when I, I wonder, I say, boy, I wonder 
What did he do? Did he ever know about me? Did our birth mother ever tell him? I don't know. And why are you sharing this with us, Les? There's some things choose to make it okay. It's okay. When Father's Day came around, I gave Mrs. Mamie Brown, who adopted us, a Father's Day card. I gave her a because she's the only father that I knew. I, I remember living in Chicago and I was on a radio station there. And at Father's Day, we had a celebration. I said, I'm inviting you to come out. Men who serve as fathers, who provide and protect, and for mothers who serve as fathers. You know, that was very controversial. A guy called, a woman can't teach a boy how to be a man. I said, that's a lie from the pit of hell. My mother taught me to be a man, to provide for my wife. I don't believe a woman should work unless she wants to work. And if she does work, whatever money she earns, she should use it for herself. But a man, not a grown boy, with his pants below his butt, a man provides and protects his family. Women aren't supposed to work. That's what a man does. Men aren't supposed to be home looking at video games and television or, or kicking it with their buddies. A man, I'm not talking about a grown boy, a man, a man provides and protects. I'm not talking about a sperm donor. I'm talking about a man now. No, you don't like it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. If the shoe fit, wear it. If it doesn't fit, and it's your shoe, wear it anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behave. Behave, Mr. Brown. What's up? I don't know. I don't know what got in me. I don't know. It's the green tea that I'm drinking and all that broccoli, that wabbit food that I'm eating every day. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> so I'm here to say and I'm speaking to the greatness in you I'm, I'm speaking to that part of you that knows what I'm talking about I'm going past your conscious mind which only 5% of your life is governed by your conscious mind the other 95% is governed by the subconscious mind your inner man your inner woman, that part of yourself. Let me tell you how it works. I was trying to remember a friend's name the other day and couldn't remember, and all of a sudden, boom, it came. Has that ever happened to you? You know, I said the other day, I've got to wake up at 7 o'clock. Didn't have an alarm clock. Guess what? I woke up at 7 o'clock. How did I do that? That's that subconscious mind. And so when you hear me, when you go on YouTube, and I want you to do this, I want you, and especially those of you that's in, in London, where I'm going to be January 20th, I want you to go on YouTube and watch Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. That's since been demolished. But Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. I'm speaking to over 80,000 people at the time. I was sleeping in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, on the 21st floor. Three times seven is 21. Seven is my lucky number at that time. I was going through a tough experience. However, and write this down, whatever you're going through right now, understand and know it has not come to stay, it has come to pass. It's been said in life, you will always be faced with a series of God-ordained opportunities, brilliantly disguised as problems and challenges. It's a God-ordained opportunity. Robert Shuler said something I like. He says that never a shortage of money is just a shortage of thinking and ideas. This is the best of times and the worst of times. And guess what? Don't pay any attention to the noise. Don't worry about what's going on in the White House, all that craziness. No. Worry about what's going on in your house. Keep thine eyes single. And have, and write this down, a what if strategy. What if you got sick? How long can you survive without a paycheck before it affects the quality of your life? 
What if someone that you love and care about got sick? Do you realize that one surgery can wipe out a fortune? 95% of the people who filed bankruptcy last year did so because of medical expenses. I was in London and all of a sudden I was in the airport and, and I was I was transformed, changing flights, going to Dubai. And this had never happened. And something I ate, I became ill in the airport. And and I had to be hospitalized. Two days in the hospital cost eighty thousand dollars, not covered by insurance. Hey, this thing called life. You need some money. I, I never wanted to be rich. I just wanted to be comfortable, to pay my bills and, and not have any debt. I just wanted to be comfortable. I didn't need to be rich. Guess what I found out? You want to be comfortable? You got to be rich. <laughs> it, it gives you choices. You can, I mean, I like the fact, if I went to, to, to fill out a job application, I put down I'm 73. They're looking at me and, 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 and they'll start laughing. They perhaps want me to be a greeter or, or be out in the parking lot pushing around grocery baskets. No, but because I, I chose to become an entrepreneur, just like many of you, because I, I wanted to control my own destiny, because I wanted to buy my mother a home. I remember working with my mother on Miami Beach, and she cooked for these wealthy families. And, and we ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. She kept her children, and we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. I remember looking around these big, beautiful mansions and said, Mama, what is it, Leslie? When I become a man, I'm going to buy you a big, beautiful home just like this. Just like this. Well, Leslie, you don't have to do that. I know, Mama. But you didn't have to adopt us, and you did. I'm talking to you now because of two women. One gave me life. The other one gave me love. God took me out of my biological mother's womb and placed me in the heart of my, my adopted mother. And, I, and I, that was my magnificent obsession. I was determined I was going to buy my mother a home. I, I have a friend named Cody, Cody Mannix. And, and he heard me speak, one of my spiritual sons. Uh, uh, he, he's out of Tampa. And he said, you know what, Les? He said, I brought my mother home because of you. I said, come on. His mother's name is Barbara. I said, did he do that? She said, yes. You inspired him. He said, I love my mother. I, I saw my mother physically abused. I saw my mother go through living hell to take care of us. And I decided, when I heard you, if you, and you adopted, if you made it important to buy your mother a home and you adopted, why can't I do that for mine? My mother sacrificed for me too. My mother went through some tough times for me too. And he bought his mother a home. Now, here's I, I want to share this with you. Become a voice of hope. I believe that now more than ever, we need voices of hope. Why, Les? Because when there's hope in the future, that gives you power in the present. They took some rats and they, they put them in some water and they watched them and they timed them to see how long it would take for them to drown. Around 45 minutes. Then they took another group of rats and put them in the water. And then around 40 minutes, they scooped them out and allowed them to rest for 24 hours. And then the next day, they put that group of rats who had been taken out and rescued in 40 minutes back in the water and put another group in the water, a new group, and guess what? The new group drowned around 45 minutes. But the group that had been scooped out in 40 minutes the day before they swam for another hour and a half. Why? With the hope. With the hope. With the hope, as Jesse used to say, if you just keep on hoping, you can keep on hopping. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Some of you is on top right now. You feel better. Some of you laughing right now don't have two dimes to rub together. I know about this. <laughs> Oh my God. I remember Larry D'Angie, he wrote a book called Soaring with the Eagles. Larry and I were sleeping in the Penobscot building in Boo, and we would hide in a closet at night around one o'clock when the janitorial staff would come in and a new guy came on and 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 there Larry and I and Boo, we were in the closet hiding in our underwear, and the guy opened the closet and he was stopped and said, Whoa! I said, Hold it, brother, don't time out. This is not what you think. These they they are not my husbands. <laughs> no, no, we just had it. Please don't tell on us. Please don't tell on us. <laughs> my God was shot to death. <laughs> so so <laughs> but you know, in the good times you put it in your pocket. In the tough times, you put it in your heart. Yeah, I've gone through some tough times. But as mama used to say, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. You can't learn good horsemanship by riding a tame horse. You can't fix lemonade with sugar alone. No, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. No test, no testimony, no guts, no glory. Come on now. That's Dexter Yeager. He was a bad boy. 50% of the volume of Amway used to go through his organizations. And I spoke for his group in the Georgia Dome. Dexter, good man, influenced and transformed millions of lives around the globe. I want to leave this with you. That not only do you have greatness in you, and that you have to literally in order not to be conformed to this world, you have to literally make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to retrain your thinking. So I want you, it's not going to cost you anything, and I'm not on here to sell you anything other than your greatness. I want you to, to watch Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. It's not over until you win. The other one, it's possible. And the other one, getting unstuck. And, and, and as you watch those three, I can tell you, you're going to start getting some ideas. Put a pad by you. And as you think about your goal and dream, and don't ask yourself how you're going to do it. That's what stopped me for 14 years. How is none of your business? Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Sit down with pen and paper and say, talk to me, Lord. Speak to me, order my thoughts and my steps. Speak to me. I'm a vessel for brilliant ideas, for million dollar ideas, for billion dollar ideas. Do that. Before you sleep tonight, before you go to sleep tonight, this is something that I do. Write down, as you think about your goal and dream, write down seven things that you're going to do tomorrow that will move you in the direction of your goals and your dreams. Write down seven things that you're going to do tomorrow that would move, move you in the direction of your goals and dreams. Why? See, if you don't have an agenda for your life, you'll be a part of somebody else's agenda. So tonight, see, most people are just trying to get through the day. You want to be clear about what you want from the day. What are the seven things that you can do that will move you closer to your dream? And when you get up tomorrow morning, review it. And then read Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh, receive it. He that seeketh, find it. He that knocks. It shall be open unto them. Put that on a three by five card and, and put the goal down. I wrote down on my goal, I give thanks for buying my mother a home. I give thanks for having it fully furnished and everything paid. I want to end on this story. First of all, I want you to like this page. There's a story I'm about to tell. 
and, and people that you care about, people that you love, or somebody you've been trying to motivate, you couldn't reach them? Well, I can. God has given me a gift. People listen to me. And I want you to like this page, and I want you to share it. Like this page and share it. This, this story I'm going to share with you is life transformative. So here's what I did. I wrote down, I give thanks for this home that I purchased from my mother. And something else just came to me. And I give thanks that it's fully furnished and everything is paid. So I'm in Columbus, Ohio. I'm going down to Miami to fulfill my dream with my mother who adopted us to buy our home. Thumbing through a phone book, I just call a real estate office at random. Now keep this in mind. Coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. So <laughs> I call this agency and the lady answers the phone. What is your name, ma'am? Shirley Bannister, my name is Les Brown. I'm coming down to Miami and I understand you're in real estate, you sell homes. She said, yes. I said, I'd like to make an appointment to see you. And I'm going to pick my mother up and, and I'd like to take her in some areas of, of North Miami Beach for her to see homes. Follow me. So we see this beautiful home after driving all around and, and she said, stop. She said, Leslie, look at that home. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, Leslie, if I lived in something like that, I would feel like Mrs. Rockefeller. George D. Rockefeller's wife had an article in the Miami Herald in Miami. I said, you really love that, mama? She said, yes. I said, okay, very good. I said, Shirley, this is something that I need to think about. This is a big, beautiful home. And then we looked at some other homes, right? And then we came back the next day. I said, Shirley, I went out to the car first before I went in and got my mother. Drive in that area again where my mother saw that house and that she loved. And so she did. And mama said, slow down, slow down, Miss Bannister, slow down. Yes, I, I, I love that. That's a beautiful home. I said, mama, I believe that I know the people who owned that home. She said, you do? I said, yes, ma'am. I said, would you like to see it? She said, yes. So Shirley got out. I went around and opened the door for my mother. My mother, at that time, mama was 78. She held my arm and, and as we started walking toward the house, she stopped and said, Leslie? I said, yes, ma'am. Boy, you sure you know these people? <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am, mama, I do. I do, I promise. We got to the door. I couldn't hold it anymore. I knew she was going to like that home. I'd already made the arrangements to get it. I put the key in the door and opened it. And I said, Mrs. Rockefeller, this is your home. She looked at me. She said, what are you talking about, Leslie? I said, this is your home, Mama. I got this for you to say thank you for all the sacrifices you made for us. She said, you didn't have to do this, boy. I said, I know, but you didn't have to adopt us either. She stuck her head in the door and said, anybody home? <laughs> I said, mama, <laughs> nobody's here, it's, it's yours. She came in, she walked around and she looked at me and looked around as fully furnished. I said, everything's paid for, mama. And I said, there's a 12 foot deep swimming pool, basketball court. Mama couldn't play basketball. <laughs> and she said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody would have ever told me something like this would happen to me. And she looked at Shirley. She said, What is your name again? Shirley Bannister. What is your father's name? Did they call him Mr. Bannister? Yes, it, 
If you work with the welfare department and adoption and foster agencies, yes. Leslie, yes, ma'am, mama. This young lady's father gave you and Wesley to me. Oh. oh my God. She said, Shirley said, you're the twins? I said, yes, I'm twin brother. You didn't say that. I, I didn't have a need to. Oh my God, I've heard my father talk about this lady who adopted these twins. Oh my God. Coincidence. It's God's way of staying anonymous. You think it's a coincidence that you're listening to me tonight? I don't think so. You think it's a coincidence of all the things that you could be doing that you would call out this time to listen to me. I want you to like this page and I want you to share it. I think at this point in my life, Everything's happening for a reason. You're listening to me. You're hearing my voice. Some of you, the majority, hear me only in your ears. But there's a number of you, and you know who you are. You hear me in your heart. You hear me in your heart. Where your heart is, there your treasure is also. And those of you that hear me in your heart, everything that I've said, you already know it. Everything that I've said, it's it's in you now. Everything that I've said, it, you resonate with it because we're branches of the same tree. We're, we're cut from the same cloth. It's, it's your time. I had a guy call me. He said, man, I, I, I was in a dark place in and someone told me to watch you on YouTube. And it brought me to the light. It changed my life. I just called to say, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I listened to you when I was in prison. Thank you, brother. You have no idea the number of people that have heard your voice and it transformed their lives. You have no idea. And all... I can say is thank you. Thank you, God. I tell speakers when I'm training them, before I speak, I said, here's what I want you to do. Before you speak, I want you to say, more of thee, less of me. More of thee, less of me. Use me today, God, it's a channel. Get me out of the way. Allow me to speak, not from my mind, but from my heart. See, words spoken to the heart enter the heart. I'd like to see some hearts on the screen. They did slow down. I don't know why. Maybe y'all bored. I don't know, but I want to see some thumbs up and some hearts. I want you to share this page and like it. And I, I'm going to wind up on this. Tonight is a special night. Tonight is your night. It's your night. If you are in the UK, I'm going to be in London January the 20th. I, I want you to go to lesbrowninlondon.com. Lesbrowninlondon.com. I'm going to be there, and I'm excited. I'm launching my brand new book called You've Gotta Be Hungry. Yes, it's ready. You gotta be hungry. I have information tomorrow on how you can get my new book. And the first, first 700 people that order it got something special for you. Yes. Oh boy. Alisa, thank you so much. Brett, thank you so much. Terry Singley. Thank you so much. God put angels in my life. They're angels, I believe, that you have too. I believe my cousin Boo, who's been on the other side for some time, January the 2nd, he'd have been 73. I believe Boo's looking out for me. I'd be, 
I believe my birth mother and my adopted mother or my bonus mother on the other side looking out for me and, and my, my birth father, the, the sperm donor, I believe he's looking out for me too. Well, I, 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 I didn't do anything in terms of child support, but I, I'm working some stuff out for you on the other side. <laughs> Oh, be hey, whatever. <laughs> Am I not the craziest 73-year-old man that you've ever seen in your life? I love life, yes. And, and so I thank you for listening to me. Coming back tomorrow. Every day that God gives me bread. I was talking to Nate Phillips. He saw me. He's close to me. We've been together for probably 12 years, he saw me getting up and I was grimacing with pain. He said, are you all right? I said, yes. He said, are you hurting me? I can tell the way you walk. I said, yeah, I am. He said, I knew it. Are you still going to talk tonight? I said, yeah, my back hurt, but my mouth doesn't. <laughs> That's okay. I said, this is my assignment. This is what I do. This is how God uses me. I don't know, nothing is promised. I don't know if I'm gonna be here tomorrow. This might be my last presentation for all I know. I don't know. I was supposed to have breakfast with Miles Monroe when we were in South Africa together. I went over where he was right across the street and I said to a lady, I said, can you let Miles Monroe know I'm here? I wrote the forward for his book called personal potential. She said, I know who you are, but he, he's doing a training now and I don't want to interrupt him, but I'll, I'll set up a breakfast for you tomorrow morning, with you and, and Dr. Miles Monroe. I said, okay, but something said, do it now. You ever heard a voice and you didn't honor it? And I didn't honor it. Next morning, he was not there. She came in and said he left early. Then a few weeks later, Miles, a good man, and his wife, a good woman, assistant pastor and his wife, and she was pregnant and others on his staff died in a plane crash. I couldn't believe it. Miles, man, that was a great voice, a great voice. We had. He was a good man. Good man. You have a voice. You have a story. If you are called, and I don't want people who are hungry to make a difference, I'd like to build an empire, a financial empire, start a new career. I don't care how old you are. Forget about your age, your age will forget about you. Email me, lesbrown77 at gmail.com and say, I'm the one. I'm ready to, to be coached by you. I'm, I'm ready to invest in myself. I'm ready to be stretched and challenged by you. Don't come up in here if you ain't ready for it. Because if you want to become the best, you've got to be willing to do the work. And most people, they just want to talk. I, I, I train speakers, never let what you want to say get in the way of what your audience wants to hear. It's not about you. All I get and get understanding, it's about being of service, about willingness to listen. The best speakers are the best listeners. The people that are suffering from diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. Oh, behave. <laughs> Ow. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> Les Brown 7 7. I'm looking for 77 people who want to be coached and trained by me, who are ready to invest in themselves. And 77, because I'm going to break you up in small groups that I can work with you, five to six. Small groups, intense, intense, intense. I'm in Cleveland now, Pepper Pike, really. Believe land. 
I want to thank you for listening. I'll be back tomorrow. Every day that God blesses me with life, my goal is to share something with you that will make a difference, hopefully, in your life. I'm learning this technology. Here's something else. Learn something today that you didn't know yesterday. There's something I learned today about Facebook. Next tomorrow, I'll be doing split screen. See, I broke it down in increments and in, in Instagram, Facebook and Instagram. Then I'm working on starting a podcast and, and some other platforms, but I've got a plan of action to learn, to learn. You, you're never too old to learn. And you're never too young to teach. A 15-year-old little girl named Amani taught me some things today so that I'll be able to spend this time with you. And I'm so thankful to her and her wonderful father, single father, good man, Nate Phillips, my spiritual son. Thank you so much. I had a, a good conversation with a young man by the name of Chris Marvell. Why don't you get his book as well? Thank you so much. This is Les Brown, Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. God bless you. God bless your dream. <laughs> and God bless the day you were born.